everybody doing today? And I just feel like sharing a little bit with y'all. Can I pass it a little bit? I love the sheep. My heart is for you. Hey, Keisha. My heart is Love you, too. Oh, see, that's what I love about it. I love everybody. Man. That DJ back there. DJ in the house. All right. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Y'all better know that there's a God. Ain't no way he going to take him out. Not on our watch. Not even create an imagination. We held it down. And the church ceased not to pray. Glory to God. Woo. Hey, hey. My God. Man. How you doing, DJ? Anything we can get for you. My God. You know me. You just make your request known. <laughs> hey, Mom. That's how you do it. What is the enemy really saying about his generation? Y'all know he got the Holy Ghost. This warfare is so serious. John, you don't wait until you see the enemy. You plant yourself, you put yourself strategically, just like a sniper. All right. And you wait, and you camouflage yourself, and you wait, because he is going to come. Yeah. Always come for the man of God. He just will use Eve. what's close to your heart. Amen. But I got you. I feel like Peter, but I've already prayed for you. But he will come. And then right after, he will come. But we've already prayed. The church cease not to pray. And y'all with me back there in the back? Y'all sure? All right. Y'all better know this warfare is real. I'm never going to get off the two subjects, love and prayer. It's an endless well. Of information, intimacy with God. Jeremiah 33, 3. Hey, teacher. I hate the enemy. I can love what God loves, and I can hate what he hates. I don't hate you, but I hate the enemy and his influence. I'm a priest and king. I am a priest, a royal priesthood. And I have a domain. I have dominion. Amen. My goodness. Jeremiah 33. I, I feel you over there, Elder. Yeah, you just got attached. We spirits. Amen. 33.3. Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 3. Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things fenced in and hidden which you do not know, do not distinguish and recognize, mm. have knowledge of and understand. Read that one more time because I don't know. I think it's about 25 people that didn't get that. Call to me. Hold on. What is prayer? That's right. Call to who? To him. 
just you could just stop right there. Call to me. And he said, what? He will answer you. Not might. He says, when you call to me, I will answer die. Man, 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 you know, when y'all doing recording and, and that voice go way up, y'all, you know, bring it down. Because I'm going to be excited. I'm going to be loud today. <laughs> what does that do to your spirit when your God said, call to me and I will answer you? Finish. Call to me and I will answer you. Ah, see, now you read that right. Yeah. Go ahead. And show you great and mighty things, fenced in and hidden, which you do not know. Stop right there. Which you do not know. When is my husband going to come? When is my wife going to come? When is my deliverance going to come? I have great and mighty things. See, to me, those things ain't mighty and great. Them things ain't mighty and great. That come along, listen, with your obedience. See, see, see those, those things are surface. Because this word said, I already know you have need before you even ask. But he says he got some great things that are what? Protected. Set aside. For the right time. Now that could be your husband. That could be your wife. That could be your children. That could be your job. <laughs> the right time. Don't circumvent God's system. Don't do it. Come on, read this thing. because We got a lot of scripture to go through tonight. I hey. will answer you and show you great and mighty things. He said that he will. He will show you. That was a great thing seeing your daughter up here praying, won't it? Y'all ain't very... See, they don't know the struggle she had growing up when I met her when she was 11 years old. And couldn't sit still. Couldn't sit. All of them. Look at her. See, he had another plan, but you had to get to, listen, your man of God. You had to get where you needed to hear what you needed to do. And prayer was it. Oh, come on now. Great and mighty things fenced in around her. Come on, finish this thing. Fenced in and hidden, which you do not know, do not distinguish and recognize, have knowledge of and understand. So it could be sitting right next to you. And you can't distinguish or recognize it until the appropriate time. Oh, God is good. Ooh, as mighty as God is, he allows man to call upon him. Man. God gives an assurance that he answers. That's why he said, call unto me. And I will. And I will. Andrea. And I will answer. Call unto him. Oh, man. Woo. You called on to him, Dalton? Okay. Sammy, you called unto God. Because he said, I will answer you. Mm. 
Tanika. See, some of us, he said, call again. And I will answer you again. Amen. Hmm. I told y'all in Revelation 5.10, the Bible calls, he speaks of us being many things, and you know, light and salt. But our function here is as priests and kings. Amen. I got to drive this home to you about us being in our priesthood and our kingship, what that really means. Because, you know, a king don't beg. <laughs> see, see, David didn't beg. David knew, King David knew his kingship. And if you had asked me, I would have given you such and such. See, you don't understand your kingship, who you really are. Okay. You, ask, you have not because you asked that, but you pray amiss. So that's why. All right. Is Tiffany listening? All right. You tell her, listen, you have not because you asked not. Tell her, make her request known. See, you just, I'm, 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 I'm going to go in this thing tonight. Stop letting me flow. All right. We don't leave no one behind. Amen? Especially the new people. <laughs> Woo! That includes the viewers. Amen. See, I got to speak to that. See, okay. It ain't just right here. Amen. <clears throat> okay. Go to Matthew. We're going to hear some word tonight. Go to Matthew 21. 12 and 13 amplified. Hold up, y'all. Do y'all see something different? Ain't no excuse. You can't see the word now. I want to thank the tithers. I want to thank all the tithers. Thank all they have given in offering. All right. Elder, we're trying to get it right, man. We're trying to do it. We're trying to do it right. We're trying to. Yeah, we got to. We got to. Amen. I want to thank all the people that were here to midnight working with me. I know, I know I can be a little, I know I can be a little aggressive, but when I have a vision, I needed to, to move forward, and I need people that move forward with me, amen, okay, amen, all right, see, so, because you know we got a prophetic word about a new place, so you have to take care of where you are now, amen. I don't wait to the, okay, here we go. You, you there? Let's go. Matthew chapter 21 at verse 12. And Jesus went into the temple, the whole temple enclosure, and drove out all who, who bought and sold in the sacred place. And he turned over the four-footed tables of the money changers and the chairs of those who sold doves. He said to them, the scripture says, mm. my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. Woo! I like he said he made a whip. He made a whip and got violent with them. I mean, you make a whip to do what? Okay. Okay. He said, my house. 
I told you, if you don't know the purpose of a thing, you will abuse it. Okay. All right. That's how the enemy get a lot of us because we don't know the purpose of our bodies. So he will abuse it. Oh, you'll let him. He said, my house, that includes WM Ministries. This is still his house. This is his house and this is his house. He said, my house will be a house of prayer. He wants to listen, have habitation for his house. And you should get real radical and kick things out of your house. You need to turn some tables over in your life. Because this house is a house of prayer. For me and my house. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. I like that. Y'all hear that voice print? That's what I'm talking about right there. Woo! It's going to be all in my message tonight, Dustin. Your body is called a house, right? called a house of prayer. He says, my house is not only a place of fellowship, not only a place of teaching, not only a place of brotherhood, but it is the house of prayer. That's a powerful statement in itself. They mean it can't be used for any other thing, priests. Uh, he, uh, I'm his. I told you, he said, my sheep know my voice. And another they won't hearken to. You have to decide first, ask your question, am I his sheep? You need to ask yourself that. Because if you are, you're going to follow him. And you don't follow him the way you want to follow him. Hello. All right. We must understand that prayer is not an option for the believer. It's not an option. You don't get to choose on this one. Hello? All right. Prayer is not a system to manage your emergencies. Elder, that one all right, Elder? Okay. It's not a system to handle your emergency. Okay, all right. So, so who is prayer for? Go to Luke 18 1. Let's find out right here. Got a little time. We're going we're gonna to work this out right here. Dejan, we're going to work it, man. Amen. Luke chapter 18 at verse 1. Also, Jesus told them a parable. To the effect, stop, stop, stop. I, I feel the Holy Ghost, y'all. I feel like something like is on me up here. I just had to stop. I feel his presence. Jesus. Might want to do something. I don't know, but I'm going to be yielded to whatever he want to do. I feel his presence. And this is not an unfamiliar, you know, feeling to me. But I just feel he want to express himself, though. Man. Like the first time, teacher. <laughs> you know, when you get filled the first time, boy. She said, what's the difference? She, she didn't know. She said, what's the best, the, the first time or the refilling? Which one is the best? Mm. I don't know, but I'll take both. <laughs> I don't know. So my mind ain't go there. Just feel me. Feel me up. Okay, you ready? 
<laughs> that note only lasts about 45 seconds. That's it. All right. I'm working on it, though. Here we go. Luke 18, 1. Chapter 18 at verse 1. Also, Jesus told them a parable. Okay. To the effect that they ought always to pray and not to turn coward, faint, lose heart, and give up. Mm. Do King James. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray. We're going to make it a little more personal. That men, men, men. Mm, mm, mm. So, so who should be leading the prayer? All right. Men. So once, so once you discover that you are man. Not a boy. See, in the Jewish at 13, if you misspell that, that's when you, you're saying you're a man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, accountability. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay? So once you discover that you're a man and not a boy, it is mandated now that you pray. Mm. It's mandated that you pray now. And then even in the scripture, listen, the side effect. Of you ignoring your priestly duties. Is that you would faint. That's what it said. Nothing like a complaining man. This is the side effect of you ignoring your priestly duties. Or ministry that you were faint. He said, I speak a parable in illustration to the end that men, that means once you find yourself as a man, you must pray, not cry, not complain. Pray. No. Everything that the Lord says. To do, well, every time the Lord says to do something, every time he says to do something, small or great, okay. it is for the advantage of the saint. Ah, it's to get you an advantage. Good. Clean the bathroom. Okay. Pick the paper up outside that we walk by all the time. Yeah. See, when you see it, that's God talking to you uh-huh. that you didn't ignore, that you ignore. Okay. (laughs) Faith is based on understanding. Not just your obedience. It can be difficult. I'm going to say it again. It can be difficult to obey what you don't understand. It can be. Don't have, but it can be. I'll be real. Can I give y'all an instance? Uh, Ephraim, come here for a second. Just stand right there on that little, stand right there on that little line right there. There you go. All right, just stand there. I want you to stand there indefinitely. That's good. That's a good answer. I want you to stand there indefinitely. Right? Chances are, after a little while, it's going to get weary. It's going to get weary. Sure, he's going to get hungry. I'm sure other things will happen. But I told him to stand there indefinitely. First action, yes, sir, y'all do it, I'll do it, I'll I'll be here, yes. But he is going to get weary. Because he doesn't understand why I told him to stand there. 
It doesn't know why I understand it. So I told you, you got to understand it. All right, here we go. Okay, here we go. You all right? Okay, all right. <laughs> but if you stand there, you know, till tomorrow morning, this some things going to be, it's going to be hard. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be weary. It's going to get weary. It's going to be difficult, right? Because he doesn't understand why I asked him to stand there. But if I tell him to stand here, because outside that door, the coronavirus is there. Or if I tell him to stand here because there's terrorists out there. Right? Even when he gets tired now, that revelation will bring stability to his action. Or the actions that he needs to take. Because now he has understanding. Did y'all get that? You can have a seat now. Thank you, sir. I need him to understand that. And I think, I think the intercessor had mentioned the word stability in your prayer. See, that's how you got to know you connected. Because you didn't know I wrote that. But by the spirit, you do. See, you got to be real tender to that voice that you hear. Listen, the voice don't always come in the earthquake. It don't always come in the white noise. It don't always come, you know, in the still voice. But you got to be, he said, the Lord speak in many ways, yet man does not perceive. Amen. Man, stay connected. It's not just your life. It's other people's lives. See, this is why you have to have understanding. Because when you have understanding now, you have the revelation. Oh, my, it's going to help me now to stand a little longer. I understand while I'm standing. Yeah. And after all that you have done. Oh. Mm. Good God Almighty. Oh, I love God. I told you I'm not holding back no more. Just need a few people to connect with me. Because he's trying to go somewhere, and he don't want me to go alone. Mm. See, you got to be in sync, because if, I, if he says pray in the spirit, I'm going to pray in the spirit. Then the minstrel got to hear back there, oh, wait a minute, that's a note that he need to be on. And he will, listen, and then he will flow with me. I'm trying to tell you all how the things work in the spirit. I sure did. It ain't about me. It's what God wants it for us. Amen. It's not enough to just believe at random. We must understand that everything God tells the saint, everything that God tells the saint, the interest of the saint is behind that instruction. All right. I said, it's not enough just to believe randomly. We must understand that everything God tells the saint, that interest of that saint is behind God's instruction. Yeah. See, don't bring your feelings in. Right. Don't bring your knowledge in what you believe. I mean, how crazy it is, spit on the ground, tell them, put the spit on the eye in the mud. It don't sound right. That just sounds like it's unsanitary, first of all. Right? That's in the day and age that we're in. Yeah. Okay. So when the Bible says that you should pray, it's not just, it's not only important to believe because God said it, but we must explore through the lens of the word, why the saints must pray. Scripture after scripture. Everything that God did, the king, anybody. It was because of prayer. But see, sometimes we miss it that that was a prayer. Because we're religious. Think we got it? Okay. Remember, prayer is a command from God. Prayer is a command from God. Okay? For every one, for everyone, 
That's the rich man, the poor man, the mother, the father, the young people, the old people. Told you that in Luke 18, 1 and 1 Thessalonians, that men should cease without praying, right? Ceasing without praying means that you what? It's a continuous prayer. Don't mean you pray for two weeks and stop for a month. You don't pray till you're tired. You pray till what? Peace come. Peace to God is simply rest. Because when you don't have peace, you don't rest. You cease. And he rests. He ceased from his work. Nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing lacking. Shalom, peace, rest. Mm, okay. I told you this is a very this is one we have to get. Prayer is one of the strategies for fellowship. Prayer is a strategy for fellowship. Okay. Second Corinthians. Thirteen, uh, verse fourteen, amplified. Second Corinthians chapter thirteen and verse fourteen, the grace, the mm. favor, and spiritual blessing of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the presence and fellowship, Ship. the communion Ship. and sharing together. And participation in the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. So, so be, be it. it. Wow. Isn't that just beautiful? That's koinonia or koinonia, depending on where you, how you pronounce it. Fellowship. Like when you go to dinner and you break bread, that's koinonia. It's a fellowship. Amen. Oh, it's a beautiful thing. A lot of things happen at dinner when you break bread. It's important that you that we grow, listen, in intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Because intimacy sponsors, listen, or sponsors, listen, it becomes fellowship. It sponsors into fellowship. I'm going to say it again. Intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Listen. Allows us to be uh, in fellowship. And this was one of the biggest things that Paul or the body of Christ that we miss is the fellowship. And how good it is to dwell with the brethren. Amen. I mean, but we don't like our brethren for whatever reason. You're not in fellowship. That's called broken fellowship. Y'all hear me? When you come here, you should have a good feeling when you see everyone. When y'all see Frida coming there, you should be like, ooh, there go my baby, my sister right there. Did y'all see Terrence and his sons and daughters come in? Oh, I just love seeing them. I feel good when I see Miss Dee Dee. She's so helpful. She do everything. Y'all see Abby and Dijon, how they sit there attentive, they listen. They like, I feel they want this. See, do y'all really feel like that when you see? See, I go through everybody. I can go through everybody in here. Y'all see Berta and Dustin? Okay. All right. <laughs> how good it is. What's going on with my daughter, Tanika? Hey, she, she need prayer. Let me silently go in my closet and pray for her. Father, cover her mind right now. Amen. Father, bring into a relationship. Yes. Father, let her bless her kids, Father. I know she's had a lot of death in the family lately. Lord, let's pray for her family right now. Yes. Cover them, strengthen their minds right now. Yes. See, do we care? Yes. Do we really care for each other like that? See, the things that I know about is not to ward over her. It's to, listen, that, those are my concerns that is my heart for her. And if we are really loving and observing of each other and not condemning, man, 
we can really fellowship. I want y'all to get it all at WM Ministries. Okay, and I want it all. Yeah. I'm not talking about any other churches. I, I'm, I'm not the shepherd of them, but I am the shepherd here. Yeah. And I want to make sure that y'all really understand the fellowship of Christ, the fellowship that we're supposed to have with each other, the love that we're supposed to walk in no matter what the circumstances, no matter how they treat you. Okay. Brethren. Or not. You are still held. Listen. Listen. To a high standard. No matter what. And how somebody. No matter what happened to you. You are still. Listen. To high, but hold yourself at a higher standard. Love always, always operates at a higher level. Yeah. Love does not operate at a lower. It's always above. Yeah. Uh -huh. Man. Y'all holding it down for each other. Y'all see Cindy over there, Minister Cindy, she done lost 30 pounds. Y'all, let's strengthen her. Lord, give her the will. Give her the strength to carry on. Protect her joints, her, her body. See, we got to know how to pray for each other for real in your observation of your brother and sister. All right. You got to care first. You like that? <laughs> you got to care. You got to care. You got to care. Okay, let's go. Because I ain't got. Yep, I'm doing good. Here we go. Watch this. Watch this. I got to go. Watch this. Here we go. <laughs> First Corinthians. I told you we're going to get word heavy tonight. First Corinthians 14, 7. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 at verse 7. If even inanimate musical instruments, such as the flute or the harp, oh. do not give distinct notes, okay. how will anyone listening know or understand what is played? Read again. If even inanimate musical instruments, such as the flute or the harp, do not give distinct notes, how will anyone listening know or understand what is played? Mm -mm -mm. Teacher, that could go into a whole like. <sighs> Did I hear it? Did I hear her? It's, she said she's going to teach on that. I want to too. Most people do not grow in the knowledge of God because we lack, listen, the time needed spent in fellowship. So we won't know the sound. You can't recognize. See, a lot of times our, our brothers and sisters are in distress. And we can't really discern or perceive. You don't know the note. See, those notes have to be in the spirit. See, we go on what, you know, how harsh they said it or whatever. They, why do they keep acting the same way? See, that should be an indicator of flag to you if you understand. If you had a heart like Adriana. You, you want your heart, listen, vulnerable. You don't want it hard. You want it exposed. So you can feel. See, you got the wrong feeling. That's a beautiful walk by you. And because I'm so intimate with the Holy Spirit, I can feel. Listen, and, and it's not some spooky thing. It's love. Love is a discerner. And Jesus perceived what the scribes are writing. Listen, he loved them. Oh. Okay. I really want us to be bonded 
together in love. For real. For real. DJ has had four or five attacks on him. And he has went through this thing like so silently. Yeah. What's going on in his mind? What is the enemy whispering to him? Hmm? He has a great life and career ahead of him. Yeah. He can go both politics or athletics. need somebody speaking into them, praying for them. Oh, my God. What's on his life? What's on his life for real? We're going to be in deep intercession for you. This is ridiculous. But you do win. You're sitting right there. You do win. <laughs> Woo! Bible calls it a mild affliction. All right. You just make sure when you're in that position, just praise him. Just give him glory. You acknowledge him. Amen? Watch what happens. Ain't nothing going to happen to me. You have a long, prosperous, fulfilling God anointed life for your children, children. You're going to see your grandchildren, your great grandkids. You're going to be here still on this earth. Amen. Faithful wife, everything. I feel the Holy Spirit in here, man. I'm telling you, I can cry, man. I feel the Holy Ghost in here tonight. Woo. Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. Psalm 63. God, I just feel it, man. Whew. He wants to be intimate with us tonight. Yes. My God. Yeah, I'm holding the pain. He's trying to come. But... <laughs> Woo! <laughs> man. Have you ever just, you know, for real, you know, in this relationship, you know, you things could be like bad, but then you you just think of God and you and you you just feel him. Yes. It's not that he said anything particular. But I feel his presence He's like I'm with you. Uh-huh. Yes. I know you're with me. Uh-huh. And you feel his presence. I wouldn't get that up for nothing. No experience. Okay, I'm going to get there. Oh, my God. Go to Psalm 63. I feel you. 63. I'm not playing. Psalm 63. The words going to bring it out, though. Come on. Let's talk to him. This is how you be intimate with him. Psalm 63. Amen. 63, 1 and 2. Amplified. Let's find out something. Ready? Psalm chapter 63 and verse 1. O God, you are my God. Earnestly will I seek you. My inner self thirsts for you. My flesh longs and is faint for you. In a dry and weary land where no water is. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. That's so beautiful. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Go back to one. Oh God, you are my God. Stop right there. You are my God. I can't. Oh my goodness. You must know God. Not the God of Abraham. Not the God of Isaac. Not the God of Jacob. Not the God of your pastor. 
you must know your God. Oh, y'all gonna get it. He has to be personal to you. It was nice to know, teacher, of your God. But I didn't know you, my God. I didn't know your God is my God. This is why I said Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I knew your God, but I didn't know my God. Same God, but I didn't know my God. See, a lot of us know the God of your past, but you don't know your God. Same God. We don't got no other difference, is it? But you got to know that he's your God. You, you, you act different. Oh, my God. He has to be personal to you. See, watch this. Here's a parable. How many of y'all know teacher? No, for real, how many of you know her? It's no trick question. How many do y'all know teacher? Raise your hand if you know teacher. Okay, that's good. Watch this. But I know God. I know teacher. You know teacher, but I know teacher. Y'all know teacher, but I know teacher. She's my wife. And you could never know her in that respect. Listen, perspective. You could never know her in that perspective. But I can't because she's my wife. I know her. No one could know Abby like you know her. She's your wife. No one could know. Listen, the grandma's right there. She know Ava, but listen, she could never know her. Same Abby, though. Listen, same Ava. Same Ava. Because it's your intimacy. I want y'all to get this. This is why he said, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Same God. Oh, no teacher. But I know teacher. God. Did y'all get that? Oh, man. Ooh, 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 ooh. Daniel eleven thirty two. Daniel chapter 11 at verse 32. And such as violate the covenant, he shall pervert and seduce with flatteries. But the people who know their God shall prove themselves strong. Stop. But the people that do know their God. See, you can know another man's God. The God of Isaac, Jacob, and Abraham. But the people that do know their God. You can know another man's God. That's another man's covenant. With God, you must know God. (sighs) 
It's not good enough that you know my God. You need to know your God. Same God. But you need to know your God. The scripture says, but the people that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Oh, my God. How do you know your God? See, when hard times come upon you, see, when hard times come upon you, teacher, there's something that you know about your God. Not your God, but my God. I know him. Oh, I'm trying. I don't know if I'm articulating this. Is anybody getting what I'm saying? Yeah. DJ, you know your God. You have to know your God. That he is a healer. Yeah. It ain't good enough for, you to tell, for me to tell you that he healed me. But you know your God. Most people do not grow in the knowledge of God because we lack the time needed to spend in fellowship with him. Second Timothy. Second Timothy 1, 12. Second Timothy chapter 1 at verse 12. And this is why I am suffering as I do. Still, I am not ashamed, for I know, I perceive, have knowledge of, and am acquainted with him whom I have believed, adhered to, and trusted in, and relied on. And I am positively persuaded that he is able to guard and keep that which has been entrusted to me and which I have committed to him until that day. See, that's a deep intimacy because all hell could be breaking loose. Everything is not favorable. He said, I'm persuaded. Beyond my emotions and what I see or don't see. I'm persuaded. I know who I believe in. I know my God. I know my God. See, it, if you're not intimate, see, this doesn't, it doesn't affect you. But when you know him. Mm, woo. Amen. Let him move. you to draw near to him and what you feel let it flow let it overtake you let it overtake you yeah. 
is a good season for you and your wife. Amen. Amen. He'll give you interpretation. You hear it? It's a good season. On the outside, it could look bad, but it's a good season for y'all. See, in the spirit, not in the natural realm. This right here is going to tear you up. Jeremiah. This is why I told the prophet of his house, he had to study Jeremiah. Jeremiah 9. That scripture is beautiful. Jeremiah 9, 23. Amplified 24, 23 and 24. I just feel them in here tonight. Jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 23. Thus says the Lord, let not the wise and skillful person glory and boast in his wisdom and skill. Let not the mighty and powerful person glory and boast in his strength and power. Let not the person who is rich in physical gratification and earthly wealth glory and boast in his temporal satisfactions Ooh. and earthly riches. But let him who glories glory in, in this. this. <laughs> <laughs> that he understands and knows, knows me personally and practically directly discerning and recognizing my character that I am the Lord who practices loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, says the Lord. Let him who glories glory in this that he understands and knows me. He said, All the riches, everything, it don't matter position, it don't, it nothing, nothing, nothing surpasses that you know God. No matter what infirmity, no matter what heartache, what disappointment, he said, glory in this. Freedom that you know him. <sighs> the real riches and wealth and achievements and accolades for the believer is that you know God and he knows you. That's the real riches. What of accolades and accomplishments that you've done? Status. I love it. Paul said, I count it all as dumb. Y'all know what dung is, don't you? It's that I know God and he knows me. Mm. That scripture minister, read it again. But let him who glories No, no, start at the 23. Verse 23. Let's get our perspective right. Thus says the Lord, let not the wise and skillful person glory and boast in his wisdom and skill. Let not the mighty and powerful person glory and boast in his strength and power. 
Let not the person who is rich in physical gratification and earthly wealth glory and boast in his temporal satisfactions and earthly riches. But let him who glories glory in this, that he understands and knows me. Personally and practically, directly discerning and recognizing my character, that I am the Lord who practices loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, says the Lord. Jeremiah was the weeping prophet, right? There's no way you could write this and not cry. You had a bad day, read this. Something going on in your body, read this. You lost your job, read this. I'm going to show you something. John 17, 3. I told you the word is just. Mm. John chapter 17 at verse 3. And this is eternal life. It means to know, to perceive, <sighs> recognize, and become acquainted with and understand you. The only true and real God, and likewise to know him, ah. Jesus as the Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah, whom you have sent. Y'all see the flow? <sighs> Read it one, one, more, one more time, one more time. And this is eternal life. He's telling you what eternal life is. It means to know, to perceive, to recognize, and become acquainted with, and understand you, the only true and real God. And likewise to know him, Jesus as the Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah, whom you have sent. This means eternal life is not just the life of God that is received, but it is a journey, an unending exploration the passion of Christ. This is what eternal life, he said, is to know him. Oh. <clears throat> Where's the church, y'all? The scriptures have always been in here. He's speaking to us. He wants us to be intimate with him and know him him to know God to know God he said that's what eternal life is that's what I want you to know is to know me This is eternal life. It means to know, to perceive, recognize, and become acquainted and understand. And know God. So we must progress 
in our knowledge of God. We must progress in our knowledge of God. See, when you know certain things about God, fear dies. When you know certain things about him, depression leaves. You know certain things about God. Suicide can't enter in. Your prayer tonight should be, Lord, reveal yourself to me. I think he is. Reveal yourself to me. Say it. Lord, reveal yourself to me. Come on, say it again. Lord, reveal yourself to me. He said, when you call upon me, he said, I will answer. He said, he will answer. Lord, reveal yourself to me. I will answer that. I will answer. I will answer. Oh. Jesus. Add some Avery. Show yourself to me, God. Add some Avery. Reveal yourself to me. And he will answer you. For those who really meant that. For those who really meant that. Watch what begins to happen in your life. See, some of us going to know him in the pit. Some of us going to know him on the mountain. Some of us going to know him in the valley. Some of us going to know him in the sea. See, when you ask him, reveal yourself to me. See, he's going to come to you. He's going to reveal himself to you. Where you can truly see him. Could be sickness. Could be in a loss of a child. See, you reveal yourself to me. Show yourself strong. Watch what happened to the ones who believed in their heart when they said, show me, Lord. Reveal yourself to me. Watch what happens. I know my God. I've seen him work in and through me for his glory, not my issues. See, when you spend time in prayer, he will reveal himself to you. Let's see what he says now in his word. John 14. He's still speaking. John 14, 21. Amplify. This will change your life. John chapter 14 and verse 21. The person who has my commands and keeps them is the one who really loves me. And whoever really loves me will be loved by my father. And I too will love him and will show, reveal, manifest myself to him. 
I will let myself be clearly seen Ooh. by him and make myself real to him. He don't want to hide from us. Did you hear what he said? One more time, one more time. The person who has my commands and keeps them is the one who really loves me. And whoever really loves me will be loved by my father. And I too will love him and will show I will reveal, manifest myself to him. I will let myself be clearly seen by him and make myself real to him. Y'all know how many scriptures in the Bible he said, and the prophet said, I behold the Lord. I saw him. He manifest, shown himself to you. Oh, Moshe said, oh God, show me your glory. This is a cry that our generation no longer has. Thank you, Adriana. This is the cry that this generation no longer has. We're more interested in show me the power to get wealth. Show me the way to money. Let me have power. Or better, let me have this power. Give me power for a job. We never say, Give me money so I can give it back. We never say, give me a job so I can bless your kingdom. And if we say it, we don't mean it. Because he'll give you the job and you still won't. Give me wealth so I can help build the ministry. My pastor has a vision. Put wealth in my hand so we can see this vision come to pass. I've shown you I've been faithful over what is in the storehouse. I don't need a fancy car or a big house. You see my heart. It is wealth, riches to know God. It is wealth and riches to know God. Reveal yourself, he said. Oh, God. Come on, y'all. Can we just pray for one minute together? Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Remember, prayer is a platform for growth and transformation. My God. When you pray, it's a platform for growth and transformation. Quickly, Luke 9, 
28, 29. Luke chapter 9 at verse 28. Now about eight days after these teachings, Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And as he was praying, the appearance of his countenance became altered, different, and his raiment became dazzling white flashing with the brilliance of lightning. Mm. All these changes was because of prayer. Prayer didn't change the environment around him. It changed him. This is why a lot of people, there's no change. Because we're not praying. Prayer changes you. It changes your countenance. It changes your garment. It turns it, listen, to white. When you pray, God will start to tell you to change this or change that about your life. Pick this up or drop that. That's your garment is being changed. It becomes white when you pray. I'm almost finished. Second Corinthians 3.18. Second Corinthians almost. chapter 3 and verse 18. Hmm. And all of us, as with unveiled face, hmm. because we continue to behold in the word of God as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are constantly being transfigured See? into his in, very in, own in, image in. in ever increasing splendor and from one degree of glory to another for this comes from the Lord who is the spirit this is what prayer this is what's going on with us prayer. It can't be prayerlessness in your life. It changes everything about you. And when it changes everything about you, everything around you would change. See, we've been doing it the wrong way. We've been trained, praying for everything around us to change. And it's supposed to be within you. Show me a weak man or a weak woman and let them. You prayed tonight, didn't you? Did you pray tonight? See, I was sitting back there and I heard Holy Spirit say, I was going to get you to pray anyway. And you was praying. I asked, who was that? I said, that was it. Praise God. Now listen to what I'm saying. Show me a weak man or a weak woman. And let them begin to pray. That weak man or that weak woman. Watch what happens. They will become, listen, another kind of man or another kind of woman. See? Pray, Sam. Pray, Billy. Pray, Andrea. Y'all ever seen a snake molt? You know what that is? When a snake molt is molting? When a snake molt, it becomes a better and bigger version of itself. That's when it sheds its skin. It sheds its skin because it's growing because of what it's eating. 
So when you begin to pray, when you begin to pray, a better you, a bigger you, a better version of you will now be seen. The more it eats, the more it changes. The more you pray, the more you eat the word, the more you change. It cannot stay in the skin that is in. You cannot stay in the same place that you are. The reason you don't grow is because you don't pray. Show me people who can pray. And I will show you people who will remain strong and stand the test of time. Show me people who can pray. I can't go there. Y'all know what it says in Jude that you build yourself up on your most holy faith. You edify. An edifice is an architectural term, as I told you. And when you pray in the Spirit, You're laying down a foundation block by block until it becomes a solid structure. This is the transformation that it takes that is taking place. Listen, your knowledge is increasing. Your stamina is increasing. When you pray, you build your faith. What is your faith? Your capacity. To believe God. Your capacity. To take what he says. As true. And we operate in a world. That is designed to come for your unbelief. Your unbelief. Of God. People all around you. Television, movies, commercials, all of them are designed to go against your belief. It causes you to question what you believe today. That you won't believe tomorrow. Y'all understand? Hey, teacher. I told y'all it's a new season. He's so worthy. Yes, he is. He's so worthy. He is so worthy. Everyone that prays, yes. you've laid a foundation of love. Yes. What Pastor said towards the end just a few minutes ago, when you pray, he said what I what Holy Spirit had already said. Amen. <laughs> I could see the better you minister said. I could see the better you kid. Minister. <laughs> <laughs> Intercessor. 
so much length. I could see Cindy, what used to be a struggle. You had already destroyed, demolished, a condition of the heart. It's no longer an issue. I could see your love walk. I could see you grow. This is where you see development in prayer. You lead the the soul of the heart for the people to receive. And then Q, the selfishness, the spirit of selfishness. You're praying your way so far out. She was here last night with us, too, all, the whole time. How you were walking and being selfless in your prayer. Amen. So beautiful. And I don't know if you guys can hear the way that I was hearing. So, Minister Cindy, when I hear other people call you Aunt Cindy, it's so as their own. Baby intercessor, when you came up. A tender heart. To grow in the grace and love of God under the condition that you were in when you first came to the People need to know who they see now was not who you were. Eleven. And how important it is for the, the wife and the husband to be united. Because what's on our children is double fault. As she was praying, Holy Spirit said, tell her mother to ensure she get the recording of this prayer. Because this prayer is for you to play back for you when you are struggling or you find yourself in a position to where you need prayer. You can remember when you prayed. This is a prayer for your children. This is a prayer for her children to hear. Can you imagine? Because as my father was dying, my grandmother, his mother, had sent a recording. It was a prayer. Nothing like the your prayer still praying. After you're no longer here physically on this earth. I just got to say thank you. Thank you for your growth. Thank you for your servitude. Thank you for believing. Thank you for yielding. WM ministry is developed. She's one of the young ministers who's leading the way. We're proud of you. Thank you, Donna. It's not about you doing all what you're supposed to be doing, but you're doing what's most important. Keep your connection with your Creator. 
no matter what happens around you. Keep your deep roots of your spiritual father. I know you got a different special love for him. I ain't mad at you. <laughs> I ain't mad at you. If she's growing, we all are growing. Amen. I love. Amen. I love what's going on. I love the the caring for each other. We are getting better. Oh, yeah. We're getting better. Let's transform and let's grow, y'all. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. All right, so. Uh, Hallelujah. The love of God. <laughs> Amen. Take us Carolina, home. Lena. Terrence. Yeah. Yeah. Can y'all just come up together and take us home? Yeah. I mean, y'all coming back with a marriage day with a vengeance. Did y'all, come on, come did y'all see? Y'all see them on Facebook? He was had his dress blue. Don't man, he was looking sharp. Shot oh, man of God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Glory to God. Can we stand in the glory of God? My goodness. First, I just want to say thank you, Pastor, for your obedient heart, sir. Uh, for listening to the Holy Spirit and allowing him to use you tonight. Um, I really spoke to me. Um, as a man, in so many ways, uh, by our hearts. Heavenly Father, we just give you all the glory, all the praise for who you are in us, God. Father, come into our lives and be intimate with us individually. Be what we need, Father God, what we need. Not us seeking the world in any way, but seeking you in everything that we do, Father. Allow us to humbly come on our knees in praise and in worship to a holy God, bowing our hearts to you in every way, Father. Father, I am grateful for the man of God tonight, for the teacher, Father God, for the people, for the, for the prayers, the intercessors that labored in the glory of you, Father, before they got here. Father, you can hear their prayers. You can feel their hearts. And Father, I'm just grateful for them being obedient unto a holy and righteous God. Father, we just give you the praise in this place tonight, God. We give you the glory, God. Be magnified in our lives through our worship, God. We thank you, Father, for all that you are in us for changing, for changing us, God, for coming into our lives, for allowing us to be new creations in the glory of a mighty God. I humbly come, God, into the might of God. You are worthy of the praise that you receive right now, God. You are worthy, God. Redeem marriages in this place, God that we may be a mighty, mighty force in the kingdom, Father. That the enemy will not have his way, oh God. That we may walk out of this place united in the kingdom of God. In the might of your glory, God. We lift your name up high. And we praise you with our lives. Being magnified in the name of Jesus Christ. Yahushua. Elohim, give you glory on the night. We give you glory on the night. Being magnified, God, I am grateful for the redeeming of my life. Help me, God, to be a mighty force for the kingdom of the glory of God. <sighs> to take this walk for God with my life, with my family's lives. That everything that I step forth into in my job, that they will see the glory that you have put inside me. Give me boldness 
give the ministers bonus for the glory of God. Hallelujah. 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 Romans 1, 1, 6. Allow us not to be ashamed of the glory of the glory of God. It is in your mighty son's name, Jesus Christ, that we give glory, that we give our lives. Amen and amen.